guys, it's Gabby back again for another video. This is pre-filmed. Today I'm going to talk about the misconceptions of blindness. So, sorry if you can't really, I don't know if you guys can see me enough. My camera's kind of not telling me if it's lined up. So, it's fine. So let's jump into this. The first one. Um, a lot of the time, a big misconception that I get is that, like, people have to speak louder when they're talking to me or addressing me um, because they also tend to think that if you're blind, you must be deaf as well. And so I think that like one way that I kind of address that and kind of say like, hey, I, you know, you don't need to scream. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm right in front of you. You know, I just kind of gently let them know, hey, I can hear you, you know, it's fine. I am, I understand you clearly. So that's, definitely one that that I've been faced with um, another misconception is that when I'm with my friends they're not my friends like apparently they must be my assistant or my aide which I feel really bad about that when I'm with my friends and we're just like going to a restaurant or we're going to get coffee obviously not now during quarantine but like on a normal regular day when we're just hanging out at the mall or anything and people are around or if we're in a store and I'm asking for something in particular they'll I guess point like my friends would tell me like they just pointed to me and said like oh like can't you help her or something and that's another thing like people think that we don't have friends that we're incapable of having friends and that people that we hang out with must be there to assist us and aid us so the way that I kind of go around that is I just say hey, you know, um, yeah, I appreciate that. My friend is here to help me, but they are also my friend at the end of the day. You know, I just wanted to know if you could assist me in finding an outfit or something, whatever I'm looking for. So that's kind of how I go around that. Um, people who think that we have super hearing. So I've been told a lot of the time that I'm daredevil, which at first I never used to mind because daredevil is pretty cool, but I didn't want to feed into the idea that this is how all blind people are because that's not how we operate. We can't like hear something happening from two blocks away or three blocks away and we don't do what Daredevil does. So um, we don't have super hearing. The only thing is that because we don't have one sense, we are, our, our other senses are heightened. So that's a big misconception and people tend to think that we can hear everything clearly and much much better we can but it's not because we have super hearing it's just because we depend on our hearing more than the average person does average is probably a bad word but you guys get what I mean um, when speak uh, mm -hmm. when you're speaking to a blind person you can't use like figurative speech um, like see saw you know like things like that which people sometimes feel bad about when they are talking to me or they're just having a regular conversation. They're like, oh, Gabby, did you see that movie? And then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, why are you sorry? Like, it's fine. And I'll be like, yeah, I, I, I watched it. Um, I've also gotten the question of like, how do you watch TV or how do you watch a movie if you can't see? And so um, you can use figurative speech with us, with, with blind people. Um, a lot of the time, like for me, I make a lot of blind jokes, so people don't always understand my blind jokes, but if you get them, then you kind of know that it's it's in my nature and that's just who I am. But a lot of the time also, um, yeah, we just, they just are afraid to say those types of words, but it's fine. So one way I, I kind of address that is just say, um, you know, I you don't have to feel offended by saying C because I understand it and I say it as well as that. That was my water bottle being knocked down by me. Oh, I'm a klutz, guys, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, the way I kind of address that is just to gently remind them like, hey, it's perfectly fine. I use C and all of that, those figurative speech phrases and things like that in my everyday life, so please Please don't feel like offended or anything or don't don't apologize for it. It's fine. 
Um, another thing is that we count our steps. Um, I know there are blind people who do count their steps, but I personally, I don't count my steps. Um, when I was younger, reading a lot of like Lewis Braille and how he lived his life, people kind of were always under the assumption that I did the same thing and that I would count my steps. And I tried it for a while just to see like how it would work out. And I don't know, it's just not really like my thing. And it, it works better for some other blind individuals. But for me personally, I just rely on my cane. I rely on sounds or if I'm with a friend or a guide, um, just rely on them to kind of verbally help me if I need it. So that's definitely one that I can say for sure. Um, a big one, this actually happened to me. So that we have to feel your face in order to get a better understanding of how you look. Um, this happened to me a while ago. A while ago, somebody asked me to feel their face because they wanted me to get to know like how they looked, and honestly, I felt really weird about it, um, because truthfully, blind people don't do that. Maybe some people do, but the ones that I know of, like nobody, has ever said, "Oh yeah, I just felt somebody's face today" to get an understanding of how they look, because feeling your face isn't. A definition of how you look that's just the outline of your face and the shape of your face and things like that so when people when I'm in a situation like that it's awkward and I just have to tell people like hey I don't really feel comfortable like putting my hands on your face and I don't really feel comfortable feeling your face because I don't think that that's gonna really give me an explanation of how you look um, and it's not like in a disrespectful way I just respectfully let them know that that's not really what I'm comfortable with maybe they can describe like facial features and things like that and that would be easier for me so um, another big one is that blind people can't live independently I know a lot of blind individuals um, blind women who are older successful um, and striving so well in their fields and a lot of them do live independently um, there are a lot of resources that are available to blind individuals so when you do decide to eventually live on your own there are things and agencies like that that are there to help you so that you don't feel stuck and they so that you don't struggle but um yeah a lot of people think that we always need to have like an aide with us or like a parent or a family member or somebody to live with us in order to help us um and that's all great and i you know People prefer that. A lot of blind people do prefer that, um, like to live with their parents or with somebody or to have somebody come in daily and kind of assist them with everyday tasks. But um, nonetheless, I think that I look at living independently a little bit differently just because you can live with a parent, but you're still doing everything for yourself. So that's still a way of you saying like, this is my place, like this, I, I'm doing this for myself. My family's just here for like moral support and to help me if I need it. So I think that like it really depends on how you look at living independently. If you mean like living on your own, yes, there are blind people who do it and they do a great job with it. So Another one is that we all go to a special school. Um, so I do know some friends who went to a school for the blind and you know, it's not a bad thing because I feel like it really does help you to learn around people who are similar to you, but also the school that they went to, I'm not trying to like disrespect their school or anything, but the school that they went to definitely didn't really prepare them for a lot of things like in the real world. Um, and I think that the sometimes going to a special school people look at it in so many different ways like you need extra help you need a mainstream classroom and that may be the case for some people especially younger students i know in like middle school and things like that or elementary um they might have to do that but as you get older you might not always need to be in that type of environment um especially if you think that you can thrive and and learn better in a different environment in a just a normal um I don't want to say normal but like in a self-contained class there we go that's the word I was looking for so 
not all blind students go to special schools, um, but the ones that do, I think that they learn a lot about blindness. They, they get a lot of information about blindness, um, but there's also pros and cons that come with that, I would say, uh, because not a lot of the time, like for instance, my friends that went to a blind school didn't really understand how to navigate and how to live in a world surrounded by sighted people, especially in college. So really depends on your style, your preference, what you choose. So yeah. Um, the last one I have here is that we can't navigate or travel independently. So I, I personally don't like, I don't travel independently often. Um, but I do know there are blind in individuals who have guide dogs, who use canes, who travel independently, who use the trains every day to get to and from school or work. Um, and that's great for, for some people. Some blind people prefer it that way. I don't prefer it that way because I've always had a fear of the subway. Um, and so I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really always prefer to travel independently, but I do um, navigation and things like that. A lot of people tend to use different resources and things to help them to navigate and travel independently. So again, it really depends on what you prefer and what you choose to do. But me personally, it really depends on what you mean by travel independently because I do travel a lot to and from like school or to and from like friends houses and things like that but there's also the higher level of like traveling on the subway which lord help me I will never do that so yeah well thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time